Hi, this is Matt, and today we're talking about what's in the Book of Mormon, specifically 1 Nephi chapter 15. So for the last four chapters, we've talked about Nephi's vision, and Nephi had just finished his vision. So starting in verse 15, Nephi has, has just been in the Spirit. He's seen some amazing things. And upon returning to his, his family, he finds his brothers arguing about what the things that their father had explained to them. So, so such a sharp contrast from being in the heavenly and, and seeing amazing things to coming home to the reality of, of his life that his brothers are, are arguing, he says, disputing about the things that their father had talked with them about. And uh, so Nephi begins to ask them, you know, what it is it that you're, you're worried about and what are you talking about? And, and they say, well, we can't really understand what our father said. We don't understand the, the, the olive tree and the grafting in of the Gentiles. That doesn't even make any sense to us. And so Nephi asks simply in verse 8, have you inquired of the Lord? Have you asked God for understanding? And they said unto me, we have not, for the Lord maketh no such thing known unto us. Their response is essentially, he's not going to tell us. Nephi said unto them, Behold, how is it that you do not keep the commandments of the Lord? How is it that you will perish because of the hardness of your hearts? Do you not remember the things which the Lord hath said? If you will not harden your hearts and ask me in faith, believing that you shall receive with diligence in keeping my commandments, surely these things shall be made known unto you. So he's saying, if you will stop hardening your hearts, if you'll ask God in faith, of course he will let you know these things. And so then he goes on to explain to them that in the last days, their posterity, who would have, uh, over a, a period of a long time, many thousands of years, they would have fallen away from the grace of God, from the word of God. They would have, what Nephi calls, dwindled in unbelief. And in the last days, those same people, their posterity, would receive the fullness of the gospel from the Gentiles. And when they do, then they will understand that they are of the house of Israel. They will understand and come to the knowledge of the covenant that God made with his ancient people and that they would, in effect, be gathered in again and to the, to the covenants of God. And so Nephi also explains to them uh, the words of Isaiah uh, concerning the restoration of the Jews, that after they are scattered and restored, that they will no more be confounded, that they will... Um, return to their to their God as as Isaiah had said, and his his brothers say, okay, okay, that makes some sense, um, but we now can't understand what our father meant by the tree of life and the vision and the rod of iron. And so Nephi goes on to explain all of those things to them, the symbolism in the vision that that of course he has just seen, and then he he begins to make an urgent plea to them. Starting in verse 25, it says, Wherefore I, Nephi, did exhort them to give heed to the word of God. Yea, I did exhort them with all the energies of my soul and with all the faculty which I possessed, that they would give heed to the word of God and remember to keep the, his commandments in all things. And uh, as Nephi continues his plea to them, he goes on to, to describe the difference between those who come to Christ and those who resist, rebel, fight against God. And starting in verse 30, he says, I said unto them that our Father also saw that the justice of God did also divide the wicked from the righteous, and the brightness thereof was like unto the brightness of a flaming fire. Wherefore, if they should die in their wickedness, they must be cast off. Wherefore, they must be brought to stand before God and be judged of their works, and if their works have been filthiness, they must be needs be filthy. And if they be filthy, it must needs be that they cannot dwell in the kingdom of God. If so, the kingdom of God must be filthy also. For the kingdom of God is not filthy, and there cannot any unclean thing enter into the kingdom of God. Wherefore, there must needs be a place of filthiness prepared for that which is filthy. And there is a place prepared, yea, even that awful hell of which I have spoken, and the devil is the preparator of it. Wherefore, the final state of the souls of men is to dwell in the kingdom of God, or to be cast out because of that justice of which I have spoken. Wherefore, the wicked are rejected from the righteous, and also from the tree of life, whose tr fruit is most precious and most desirable above all other fruits. Yea, it is the greatest of all the gifts of God. So that ends our summary of, of chapter 15. I invite you to read for yourself to get the unedited version 
get all of the, the good details. Uh, next time, we'll see how Nephi's brothers respond to, to his words. Obviously, he's spoken to them pretty boldly. And until next time, happy reading.